Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind podcast. Uh, my name is Ryland Close, and I am joined by Mitchell Porter. Uh, and this is going to be kind of a quick one today. Uh, there was only one tournament this past weekend, and it was just a quick little uh, doubleheader between Michigan State and BGSU. Yeah, so the Spartan Falcon Showdown, as it was aptly named, uh, the Spartans from Michigan State and the BGSU Falcons went head-to-head in what were a contrasting two games that they played. The first game was pretty predictable. Michigan State came out and showed why they were the undefeated national champions last year, beating BGSU 5-1. to And there's not many talking points from that game, but the second game of the doubleheader is really where things got interesting. It did go to overtime, and uh, for the Michigan State Spartans, they won four to three in overtime. It was a lot. You know, I don't know how much closer it could get than the scoreline reflected, but it really did. Each point was like down to the last person. It was very gritty. Uh, BG was fighting for everything. They tried to take a huge bite out of a steak, and just at the very end, they bit off a little bit more than they could chew. But it still shows as a great performance on at least the stat sheet as it reflects in probably the upcoming standings that we'll see pretty soon and uh we have some standout players from that tournament rylan i think you wanted to talk about that uh yeah definitely um nick fedewa i was told obviously big name for them uh, all the usual suspects that are left um bgsu had some pretty solid performances as well from uh, josh boyers and evan maynard um, and yeah, that game <clears throat> came literally down to the wire, down to the last catch. Uh, it was a one-on-one in overtime, and uh, you know, BGSU just barely missed that final catch. Um, and I think it's going to be really interesting to kind of reflect on some of the implications of that game. Uh, even though Michigan State won both games, um, you know, they were not taken to overtime often last season. I think once or twice, uh, and one of those times was in the finals against GVSU. Um, so, you know, for BGSU to come out in the first tournament and, you know, take, take a rough, uh, rough game the first time around and then make some adjustments and come back way stronger and almost knock off the defending champions and, and then their first loss in two years in their first tournament is kind of a big deal. I think it's got big implications for both teams. Um, I was told that this tournament for BGSU was kind of a, uh, more of an experience tur- based tournament. You know, they, there were a lot of starters that they didn't necessarily have. They, they wanted to give the rookies, uh, they, they brought a ton of rookies and wanted to give them all some experience playing against one of the best teams in the league. Um, so, you know, it might be fun to see these two teams rematch down the load, down the road at a uh, full strength. Um, and in the case and, of, and, yeah, uh, go ahead. And um, to add on to that, especially as we talked about BGSU was with a lot of their rookies, but I think the main point is that they did not have one of the best women in the entire NCAA day with them, uh, Rennie Kaiser. She wasn't there at all. And this BGSU team took a pretty star studded Michigan state team. And, you know, I think BGSU is a team that you got to look out for, not just in Ohio, but across the nation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and as far as MSU goes, you know, obviously they went two and zero. they walked away, you know, somewhat comfortable with the results, but they've definitely got some cleaning up to do if they want to replicate next last year's performance. Um, you know, this was this was not a team that they expected to take them to overtime. I don't think this was like this time last year. Both of these games end closer to the first first game. So, uh, you know, obviously MSU lost a ton of talent, ridiculous amount of talent, and any team is going to struggle to replace that much that big of a graduating class. Um, but you know, they still look good. And they still look like a top tier team this year. Um, but I definitely think that they're going to be a little bit more uh, mortal. Uh, than they were last year, just compared, just just with the sheer amount of you know firepower that they lost. Um, but yeah, that's about all we've got for uh, this Neutral Zone podcast. Uh, make sure you tune in, uh, Neutral Zone Rewind podcast. Excuse me. Uh, make sure you tune in next weekend. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more to talk about at that tournament, uh, at that uh, that session because uh, there are four tournaments coming up over the next weekend. Four tournaments. There's a, a UWP UNL tournament. There is a uh, one at Miami. There is one at, down south featuring a couple like new, like a, a new blossoming southern region that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And the last one is at UMD. So every region just about is going to have tournaments. A lot of dodgeball to watch, a lot of dodgeball to talk about. So uh, make sure you, you know, go check some of those games out. And we will be back next week to talk about that. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for watching.